If you're feeling like crap, there are lots of things you could do to feel better. But from my point of view, there is one thing more than anything else you should focus on to feel better. And that is a series of habits that produce a state of resonance. So in this video, I want to give five internal habits you can do to produce more resonance in your life. What's up guys, it's Alex Hine, author of Master the Day and Milk the Pigeon. So before we jump in here, I've put together a free journaling worksheet. It's the first link right below the video. It will help you figure out how to get your life together, how to figure out what you want, and how to plot an incredible life going forward in the future. So check it out. The first way to raise your vibe is to view all of your thoughts as stories. I'll never forget this conversation I had with a friend. She had just been broken up with by a guy she really liked, and she was in that mode of all men suck, all men are players, all men don't want to commit. Now, unfortunately for her, she carried that belief with her for the next year or two. So naturally, you can imagine when she believed that every man sucks, every man doesn't want to commit, every man's a player, that's what she saw everywhere. So as a result, for two years, she was not able to find love again because she had a very negative mindset towards men. And it was only after she viewed that as a story, that was a trauma response from her last relationship, just being hurt. She couldn't just say, I was hurt, I was sad, I didn't think I would find that again. That's why I viewed men this way. When she was aware of that belief that it was a story, not necessarily an objective reality with a high percentage of truth, then her life changed. In many cases in life, our perception of reality is just that. It's just perception. Before I ever wrote a book, I was not the kind of person who ever thought I could or would write a book. But now that I am an author with multiple books, my identity and the story I tell about myself has changed. And also my beliefs about what I can do have changed. So it's very interesting to see how your story and your self-perception will change if you just change the story first or if you take action, which then does change your story. The second way to raise your vibe is just to ignore what other people think. Now I know this is easier said than done. I know if you're a creative and your mom wants you to be a doctor, there's gonna be friction there forever. I know if you're a 35 year old woman and you don't want kids yet and your mom wants you to have babies now, there's gonna be friction there. I know that if you've always wanted to be an au pair in Spain and your parents really want you to go to law school now, there's going to be friction. But one of the best ways is to assess if someone's life advice is valuable for you is do they have the life you want? Honestly, it's that simple. So if your parent says, you know, my mom's a doctor, she wants me to be a doctor, but what I really want to do is write books and be a YouTuber. Well, does she have the life you want test? Does my mom seem happy, like she loves her career? No. Does she have nice work hours and the ability to enjoy her days? No. Does she jump out of bed and can't wait to get to the hospital in the morning? No. So I understand what my mom is saying about wanting me to have certainty and financial stability, but does she have the life I want? No. And it can go the other way too. Maybe your friend who's the not that driven creative and you're the driven medical student says, you should drop out, let's just go backpack, we can read poetry and go travel to Thailand, right? But then you apply it through that same filter. Do they have the life I want? Well, he wakes up all day and plays video games and smokes weed and doesn't do much and is overweight and is unhappy if he doesn't have his vices. So do they have the life I want? No. For me, one thing that has helped me the most is people's advice may hurt you, their advice may bother you, but the number one thing you should vet it through is, do they have the life I want? And because most people will not, you can evaluate their life advice through that lens. The third habit that will raise your vibe is understanding that it only takes one hour a day to inch towards your dream life. You know, if you're watching this video, you're probably not in the best state. And so it can be discouraging to think, oh man, I need to work out an hour a day meal prep, I need to work on making new friends, I've got to ask that person out because I don't want to be single, I've got to save more money, get a promotion, change my job, it's an insurmountable amount of stuff to do to improve your life, right? Well, I've also been there because I'm a human, most of my life I didn't even make more than 50k, I've always struggled with making friends, I was never an author before in my life and I was never a person uploading content on the internet and yet I've now done all of those things and most of it was not done because I had nine hours a day to work towards my dreams. I did most of it while I had a full-time job, right? 
I love the Earl Nightingale story about how if you dedicate one hour a day towards a craft, within seven years, you can be in the top 1% in the world. But from our point of view about feeling better, it doesn't take that much time to change your life. It just takes consistency over time. It just takes one hour a day of reflection and changing a habit to be fit after a year. It takes one hour a day and reflection to find that incredible relationship or to rebuild your friendships. It takes one hour a day of getting a new hobby to really rebuild your spirit and to be in a good mood because you picked up salsa dancing or a programming class or an acting class or painting, whatever it is. It only takes an hour a day to really change your state. And if you keep changing your state enough, you will also change your life. The fourth way to raise your vibe is to choose alignment or energy over logic. The way I like to think about this is that if you went to college or high school, what is easier to go to? The class that you don't like, but you know you're going to make six figures in like six years if you do good in these math classes or physics or biochem or whatever it is, or the class you really, really love to learn about. The class you're so interested in that that textbook or that book or that author or Jane Goodall, whoever it is, the person is someone that's an idol or someone whose book you've read or you want to read. Is it easier to show up to the class where you're like, oh, if I nail these classes for six years, I'm going to be making bank versus this class is something I want to learn about right now. Intrinsic motivation has a lot more staying power and it is more immediately available. So most of the time you are going to show up and do the things that intrinsically feel good now. You like them now. You want to do them today. You don't have to be told to do them. When you love something, you will do it anyway. You will not have to rely on an external motivation or external incentive to actually do something that will make your life better. So for so many of us, if you follow excitement, that is the fastest path to alignment. And it doesn't mean you're not going to have to learn business skills if you're a creative. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to get confidence if you want to ask that girl or that guy out. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to train hard if you want to be a pro athlete. You will. But at least you're going to love the direction you're traveling in and it's going to take one-tenth the energy to get yourself out of bed. Now my last tip for alignment is don't force things that don't work. Don't keep pushing things that you want that aren't working. You know, the number of people I see who have friends that they keep having to reach out to every Friday. Oh, hey man, are we hanging out? Every Thursday, hey, are we hanging out? Hey, are we going to that event? The fact that people have to keep hitting up the same person over and over and over 10 times and that person is not hitting them up to reach and hang out is sad. But that is the reality of being a human being, right? You shouldn't have to babysit people that are your real friends. You shouldn't have to keep pushing for goals for years and years and years and it's not happening and then keep trying to push it to make it happen. If you have uploaded 100 YouTube videos and it's not working for you, maybe that's not your thing. That's not your gift. Maybe that is not where the flow of life is trying to take you and there's something better out there for you. It's funny when you listen to these success stories of really ultra successful people. Oprah, Steve Jobs, you listen to Elon Musk, you listen to Jeff Bezos. It's fascinating because while there is of course hard work, what is also there is the very fact that at a certain point they all realize that pushing will never get you to the top. At a certain point they realize that trusting your gut being quiet and silent and still and trusting those gut hunches is what is going to lead you to the top because that is going to lead you on a very different path than the path of trying to force everything to happen. And the sooner you can recognize if you have to force a relationship to work every day and it's an excessive amount of work, that is not the right relationship or you two are not the right people. If you have to keep forcing yourself to write books and it sucks and it's hard and it's never getting better, why are you writing books? right? You should write it because there's love there. There's something you want to create. And if there's something you want to build in this world, if every day it feels like a chore, maybe you should go off and find something that doesn't feel like that internally because you will find something. So to me, the fastest path to alignment is stop forcing things that aren't working. And that is sometimes sad and hard to let go of, but it is just as true with friends as it is with work. So five tips that can help you stay energized and aligned. I hope that helps guys. Check out the journaling sheet below the video and I'll see you soon.